This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in your backyard of Harrisburg, Ohio. They are a world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, which means that it doesn't sit on the shelves. It is, it is, the bean is there roasted after you ordered. They are fair trade certified. USD organic and integrity is their core value. They have high quality coffee beans from far off countries such as Brazil, Honduras, Peru, Colombia, and much, much more. Coffees come in K cup gift cards still available, and of course, free shipping over $50. Be sure to check out all the coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What is up? Sloop Cat's down in the chat. We have a we have a full room going today. Say hi, everybody. Say Welcome hi, everybody. 20... Welcome say, to 2022. Everybody. Jared. Say yeah, it's welcome to 2022, everybody. I was <laughs> I was I was busy demanding things from our from our from our sloop cats. Just, just cause, I, just cause I get off on the power of it. That's all. <laughs> we have a football game to talk about, Jerry. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a month here, so let's let's hop right into our Scarlet and Great episode. Yep. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, new era of the Sloopcast, so that's fun. It's 2022. We are once again independent, uh, so that's a lot of fun. Um, if you're looking for, if you're seeing, if maybe you're listening to this, and maybe you're looking for our YouTube stuff, it's moved over to our exclusively to our channel. Uh, so it's uh oh yeah, uh, Michigan Bucknut joined us for our social cast last night. Uh, we were all watching the game together. Just don't just don't tell ESPN in the Discord server. So that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> shh, that never happened. Herb Street will get so mad, you guys. First players opting out, and now I streamed it to a few people in our Discord server. Herb Street's going to be pissed. No one tell Herb Street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Jared. It's our Scarlet and Great episode, so let's jump right into it here. Ohio State, Utah, Rose Bowl. Man, who, who would have thought this would have been like... <laughs> I think the over-under was 64 points. I, I don't I don't remember. <laughs> it, it was it, it was something like sixty four points, but man, ninety three points scored in this Rose Bowl game. Was not anticipating this high scoring of a game, especially knowing Utah's defense. Sure, but also knowing Ohio State's defense. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Knowles, uh, who was not officially on the coaching staff yet, was not calling this game. If if anyone's not aware of that and maybe looking for a bit of solace, this was not this was not uh, Knowles' defense. He was he was not uh, at he was not in Pasadena. Uh, he was not calling this defense. Uh, as far as I know, uh, he he had somewhere between little and nothing to do with the game plan. So just in case anyone needs to hear that, this is not the new defense yet. Thank God. <laughs> Um, we did blitz against the bubble. Maybe our guys, you know, with a month off could figure out that maybe that's a thing you could do, but yeah, it's, uh, the defense, uh, still struggling. Obviously the offense offense setting records like it, like, like they forgot to take a NCAA off of rookie mode, excuse me, off of freshman mode. <laughs> yeah. But man, I mean, I mean, hats off to to Ohio State. They, I mean, for the second half adjust adjustments. What was it yeah. here? I'm doing some. Just going to do some quick math here. So in the first half, they they let up 324 yards in that first half. Not good. And Not how good, many points? Jared. And uh, how many? It was is 35. And, tw- and 35 points. Yeah, now one of 35. those was a kick return. So technically the defense only gave up 28, 
but I you know only twenty eight in the first half, mm-hmm. only twenty eight. Yeah, but Ohio State in the second half uh, changed things around, and yeah, injuries happen, and I think a lot of that yeah. had to do with it too. But this the stat lines show that in the second half, Ohio State had only allowed one hundred and thirty nine yards and ten points. Yeah, and it started to look like a sort of a lot of the same. And like I know a lot of Ohio State fans have given Tommy Eichenberg a lot of crap this year. And I'm not I'm not totally I'm not totally defending Tommy Eichenberg. Um I've not given Eichenberg a lot of crap, Stuart. I, I, I have not. Um I the entire defensive scheme is bad. It's really hard. Yes, yes, you have gangland. Um, the entire, I, I've been defending Eichenberg all year. Now, have I publicly said that I wanted, that I wanted steel and, um, why, <laughs> what is, what is that picture, Stuart? Uh, that, that, uh, you know, but you know, we did not have Cody Simon available. I had said, I had said multiple times this year, I thought the starter should be Simon and steel. I, I've said that, but you know, Cody Simon was not an option this game and Eichenberg came in and played a really, really good game. Let's, let's not, you know, a lot of, a lot of bad things were said about Eichenberg this year. He did, he does give up the touchdown in the end zone, but he really shouldn't have been there to begin with. That's not a fair position to put him in. And honestly, he honestly, he wasn't even like burnt. It was a great throw and a great catch, but he, he has 17 tackles this game, setting a new Ohio state record. That, that touchdown, had very mind me a lot like what happened a year ago. Not at all. No, I totally disagree. Tough Borland got totally now. If given enough space, Eichenberg's not gonna not gonna stick with that wide receiver. Sure, but okay. Uh, but it's not. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not a big deal. I, I don't think because. Again, considering he was not bad coverage, was it good coverage? No, but it wasn't bad coverage, especially considering yeah. that's not a matchup you should expect him to to win too often. Um, you know, so there's still schematic issues. Obviously, obviously, there's still schematic issues. Um, but I'm just defending. I'm not even defending the defense as a whole. I was just defending. Eichenberg, a guy who had received a lot of crap this year, who had an amazing game. Now, was he yeah, maybe it, was he maybe the only defensive player to have a good game? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. And, 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 and that play is just one of those things. Doesn't matter how great of a defense you play, you play everything perfectly. Sometimes the sometimes offense just they just make a play. It, it happens. Yeah. So, uh, Stewart. Yes. Uh, Jack Sawyer did play well, but he didn't play for very long. While he was in there, he played well. <laughs> yeah. And I, but I don't think Brown or Burke had a bad game either. Uh, most of the passing yards were against zones in the middle of the defense. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, exploiting of, of what we've seen all year, right? Exploiting of a lot, a lot of those middle zones uh, against Ohio State safeties and linebackers. Uh, again, like, I, I don't feel like even, you know, I'm not saying they had perfect games, but I, I don't feel like Burke or Brown had bad games either by any means. I don't remember seeing them beat too often. I do remember catches being made against them here and there, but um, I, I I don't think it was a, a bad game by them. Um, but yeah, uh, yes, Stuart, uh, Ronnie Hickman, who's been sort of the, one of the, the, one of the lone bright spots of the defense this year did not have a good game, but it's a, it's a, it's a thing. Uh, not, not everyone's going to be great all the time. Uh, Ohio state was down a lot of players for this game. Um, some preparing for the draft, some sitting at home tweeting. So it was, <laughs> <laughs> it's not get into that Jared. I'm not, I don't plan on it, but Kyle, let's, let's get into actually grading this game out. Um, we kind of already started with the defense a tad. I thought the the corners had a serviceable game. Again, a, a lot of the passing that was done, I felt like was done against the middle of the defense. I don't think it was necessarily on the corners. Uh, I'm perfectly happy 
to to give them like a B, maybe a B plus. I don't think the corners specifically yeah. had now, a bad I, game. I want to go. I want to go higher than a B. I would say B is probably sufficient. So for the for the for the game, uh, Utah had 237 yards in the air. Of that 237 and 19 completions, nine and half of the yardage went to their their two tight ends. Yeah. Uh, Michigan Bucknet says you should grade the defense by half. Like, give them a first half grade and a second half grade. And I don't want to spend that much time doing it, but that's that's a very valid point. Like, we do, we can't just grade them on the disaster that they were, and they were in the first half, but we also have to consider the fact that with some adjustments, whether they be schematic or motivational or whatever those adjustments were, they played a lot better in the second half. And we have to also, we're not, we're not grading them based off of the first half or the second half. We're grading them based yeah. off of both halves. I, I think, I think B is, yeah. is fair. I think B is fair. But now if you want to talk about safeties, I think that's a yeah. lot lower grade. I think that's a lot yeah. lower grade, yeah, especially, it's... especially seeing so many missed tackles on it, yeah it's not easy tackling uh their their tight ends their their 12 tight ends that they played in that game but so many so many missed tackles in, in from that safety so i i got to give the safeties like a c minus oh that i think you're being nice i think you're being nice i i think a, i think a d is probably yeah uh, i don't quite frankly i'm wondering if a d is nice <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, well, I think we'll go with D and quite frankly, that might be being nice. Um, okay. <clears throat> the defensive line as a whole, Kyle, do you have a, maybe a defensive line as a whole, uh, the defensive tackles, the defensive ends. Um, I don't feel like they were necessarily the weakness. They, they did give up some cheap running yards early in the game, but they did seem to sort of shore that up after a couple drives. Um, there was some pressure on the quarterback, but I also felt like they had the blitz to get pressure on the quarterback. So that's never well, what you want to be happening. You don't want to be would, dependent upon blitzing. What, how yeah, you feeling? I would, I would say I would say that the defensive line as a whole, I'd probably give them like a C plus. I'm okay I'd with that. Give, it'd be like a C plus. Now, if you take out uh, Vincent out of that, it'd probably be a straight up D. Like Vincent <laughs> had himself. Vincent I don't had think Zach Harrison a, had a bad game. No, he, he he didn't either. But Vincent, man, he he had he had himself a showing in that in that game, like as a as a defensive tackle, and you got you got six tackles in that game. That's you 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 made you made your presence known, for sure. So All right, Kyle, so, C plus, uh, so C plus for the defensive line. Now the linebackers, Jared. It's so it's it's weird. I felt like Eichenberg had a good game, but I feel like that's it. I don't. I, I love Steel Chambers. I expect him to start and play well next year. I don't think this Stover. was an exceptionally good game for him this game. Yeah, Chambers played well. Stover, I don't, played well too. I don't think I don't think either of them played that well. If I'm being honest with you, I thought Eichenberg had a good game, but I don't. Well, I I don't. I mean, they got tackles, but it, sometimes it's not about getting a tackle. Sometimes it's about where you get the tackle. You know, are you penetrating and meeting the guy in the line? Or are you catching him three or four yards downfield and letting them bowl you over and letting them fall forward? You know what I mean? It's it's not just about making tackles. Sometimes it's about where you're making tackles. And as far as like actually like penetrating and making good plays. I don't, did I, I don't know how much I saw any of the linebackers outside of Tommy Eichenberg. One of the reasons why Ohio state was able to win this game was the fact that Ohio state had a really nice stand in the red zone that forced Utah to kick a field goal, which I, I believe was the last points Utah scored. Mm. And that was strictly on yeah. the back of two. Was it not with the touchdown come after yeah. that? Okay, but that 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 goal line stand was strictly on the back of Tommy Eichenberg making two uh, successive great plays. Um, I, I I I you know and maybe I'm going overboard with my praise of Eichenberg. I really might be, but you know, 17 tackles, for uh, practically single handedly forced the field goal, which you know in a game that ends with a three-point victory is obviously a huge deal 
um, I just, and it's just again because he was sort of a, a, a the Twitter whipping boy for the team, yeah. Along with one or two other players on defense, I'm so just. What would you rate them? How would you rate them? Uh, I but again, I think Eichenberg was the only linebacker who I think had a, a good game. So I'm not grading Eichenberg. I'm grading the defense as a whole. So I don't, or I mean the linebackers as a whole. So I don't know, like a C. That, that's what I wrote down. I have I have a C as well, just yeah. as a whole. C, C minus, something like that, but we'll, we'll go with C. Okay. All right, uh, special teams gets an F. You can't let up a touchdown. Absolutely. Well, maybe, maybe I'll give well, him a maybe. Maybe I'll give him a just a D because of uh, because of no um, no struggle ruggles. Um, yeah. Get, gets a gets a, gets a pair of field goals, including the game winning one. So just just a just a D. Um, but yes, but yeah, absolutely. And, and there was a couple of plays that this would be a fun thing. To and talk by the about way, I just for, want to say this before se- anyone was like, season is going to be Emeka and how, and how he's going to be able to do returns next year too. Cause he, he showed sparks in this game here. I mean, I'm yeah. excited for next year. Will 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 2022 be the year we finally get a, um, a return touchdown. No. <laughs> <laughs> um and by the way before anyone's like oh the punt block i mean that was that was utah screwing up that's all that yeah. was that was yep. that was a gift to ohio state mm-hmm. um yeah so okay no struggle ruggle pulls them out of failing and into d territory i guess yes all right um let's um before we get too far away from this um yeah, exactly. Uh, Gangland corrects me. It wasn't a punt block. It was a punt drop. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, spe- Before we get too fur- much further away from the defense, uh, Ransom injures his leg, will be out for spring camp. Um, it was, I, I guess, a break, I, I think, is what we're hearing. It was, it was a break of the bone, which sucks, but is, you know, you have a definitive timetable on a bone break is the good thing about a bone break. We, we basically do know at this point how long it takes to set the bone, have the he- have the bone remend, and you basically know where he'll be and how he'll be when he comes back. It's not as complicated as like a, a ligament injury or something along those lines. Uh, Gangland, who is our resident medical expert, uh, says they'll put a stimulator on it and he'll be all good. There you go. So there you go. Um, and... You know, we'll, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna do a recruiting episode at some point this week, so we'll get into more detail on this later. But Amari Abor, uh, today, our today, your your yesterday podcast listeners uh, chooses Ohio State at uh, one of the uh, high school senior events, one of the high school senior bowls, one of the I don't even know it was Under Armour or Adidas or something. I don't know. screw them. I don't we don't we don't got to give them advertising. It's fine. Maybe it was Nike. Maybe it was Reebok. I don't care. There. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you, Stuart. And um, Matt Barnes has accepted the defensive coordinator job at Memphis. I am cheering for him. Um, I, I will, I've said it a thousand times this season. I will, or Puma. Thank you, Michigan Bucknut. Um, I said it a thousand times this year. Uh, I really thought Matt Barnes did an incredible job considering the limitations he was given, having to basically take over the defensive coordinator spot a couple weeks into the season and try and fix a thing mid season. Was it always great? No, no, it wasn't. But I really feel like he did a real admirable, admirable job considering his lack of experience and the challenge he faced. So I, yep. I, I am cheering for him at Memphis. I, I think he, uh, I think Ohio state fans, uh, owe him a lot of gratitude. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Jerry, uh, before the- Uggs Stewart, really? Uggs, you think Uggs is gonna sponsor the sponsor the the senior bowl? <laughs> we I feel like we should at least uh fair enough. The <laughs> all right, Kyle. Uh let's let's do another ad read, then we'll come back and, and grade the offense. And since we're doing an ad read, of course we're gonna talk about the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based veteran marine owned roaster integrity. Kyle already did all that stuff, right? Let's take a look at some of the coffees. I feel like maybe I haven't talked about any of the flavored coffees in a minute, 
So let's, let's take a, a quick read down the flavored coffees. There's the mint chocolate chip. There's the white chocolate peppermint. Still available. That one's a seasonal. If you want to grab that one, you better do it soon. Um, for example, the mom's carrot cake currently out of stock. You guys got to jump on these while you can. Uh, there's the Dylan's grog, which is, of course, an Irish grog. Um, the uh, intense blueberry, the bananas foster, the peanut butter chocolate buckeye. Uh, the butter pecan, the cinnamon roll, the salted caramel, the vanil vanilla hazel cut, vanilla hazel nut. Trying to talk too fast. Uh, the unicorn, which is a mystery flavor. And then if none of those flavors sound good, you can always take a, a, a venture into the back room where you find the uh, murder brand coffees, where you have the serial killer, which is a vanilla buttercream. Uh, the bloodbath, which is a red velvet cake. The Turning Blue, which is a blueberry cinnamon crumble. And, of course, the Soulless, which is a ginger snap coffee. Wow. That's a lot of flavored coffees. And, like, they have just as much, maybe even more, not flavored coffees. You can discover those ones for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle. Uh, what do we got now? We got the offense. We got... <laughs> we have... Gee, offense is there really anything who... worth talking? All right, guys, we we ate our salad. Now, now it's time to get to the steak. Let's talk about the offense. Let's get to the it's, it's the steak and it's the dessert all in one. Let's let's put away let's put away the vegetables. Let's let's get to the good stuff here. Almost seven hundred offensive yards in this game, Jared. Ridiculous. C.J. Stroud setting records. Uh, sets a Rose Bowl record, sets an Ohio State single game record, uh, throwing for 573 yards. I don't think people really realize how ridiculous that is. He beat his own. <laughs> he beat his own record by 74 yards. It's insane. That's absolutely insane. And the funny thing is, like, is it even like? Is it even the most ridiculous? Yeah, absolutely dropping dimes. Um, throws 37 for 46. We, we got a little bit of the old C.J. Stroud in this game. It's felt a little bit like September C.J. Stroud because those first couple of drives, it, it kind of felt like he struggled in those first couple of drives and had to settle into the game. You know, he takes a month off and he kind of reverted back to his old ways a bit. Uh, he wrote, reverted back to his old games, old ways a bit um, and had... A little bit of a, a settle-in period. Didn't come out, didn't come out great, right? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit rusty, whether it be physically rusty or mentally rusty. Not a hundred percent sure, but it, it took him a moment to settle back into the game. But you know, they go down fourteen nothing right away. But there was just no panic in it. Ohio State's built to is built to score quickly, so there was no there's no real panic there. Uh, Stewart, yeah, they did, or excuse me, Gangland, they did go uh, run heavy early. Uh, it, that was disappointing that they, you know, we didn't get the running games that you would potentially want. Uh, Henderson, you know, it, it's weird to say he struggled cause he got almost five, 4.9, almost five yards a carry. Uh, Mayan came in, only got the ball twice, but got eight and a half per carry. So it's, um, overall, I mean, it's, it's not exactly what you wanted out of the running game, but who cares when you have CJ Stroud, 37 for 46, 573 yards and six touchdowns. You know what really started it? You know what really started it, Jared, for him? What's that? It was it was, it was that third and eight run by CJ Stroud. You think so? And, and then and then he got going. Well, you look the first the first possession, short run, short run, incomplete. Second second drive, uh incomplete, incomplete, or it was short, complete, short, complete, incomplete. So it was two, three and outs. And then it looked like it was going to be another three and out here. It's third and eight and CJ Stroud runs it for 10 yards. And then all of a sudden you see completed for a Mecca for 30 yards. And then, and then that, and then to Ruckert and then to Marvin Harrison Jr. Like he, he got really in his groove since then. You know, Kyle, you might be onto something. Maybe, you know, there's a, I've heard quarterbacks say sometimes they just need to get hit before they can really settle into a game. Maybe that's CJ Stroud. Um, you know, his, 
People are like, oh, what did you, all, all, all year it was like, you know, he, he doesn't run enough. He doesn't run. He should run more. Maybe the shoulder is just finally feeling good. Like his, oh, he doesn't run enough. Uh, he had a hurt shoulder. His throwing shoulder was hurt. Not running, probably a good idea. You know, we saw the 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 scramble again in the Michigan game got called back for a hold. Doesn't count, but he did it. And then in this game, he he saw the opportunity and he ran and he got a first down. Again, maybe that's just what a healthy shoulder does for you. Um, let's see the so Kyle quarterback and that was a, and that, and that, was, a, that was a that was the last time Ohio State hunted it was the first two drives. Oh no, kidding! That's Hunt, yeah, that's. Hunt. No more, no more punting. I mean, you had the fumble and then you had the interception. Right. On, but. Yeah. By the way, how, how good, how good is Jackson Smith and Jimbo that <laughs> we just like the fact that he fumbled the ball going into the end zone and like no one's even talking about it. Like it's totally forgiven. No one cares. Everything's fine. That's how good of a game he had. He he got the ball punched out on the way to the end zone and no one cares. Yeah, that's... just no one cares. How good is Jackson Smith and Jimba that <laughs> freshman wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr., who had what five catches coming into okay. this game? Oh, yeah, yeah. Gets six catches this game, half of those for touchdowns, and I don't feel like anyone's talking about it. <laughs> Well, the answer your first uh, part. Stuart, no, that does not take away from any stats. Statistically, it's just as if he was tackled right there. So he still gets all the yards all the way to the touchdown. Or excuse me, all the way to the fumble. Yeah. So, but still, geez, your, your first part there about JSN, 347 yards. That's all the records. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a Rose Bowl records. record. That's a bowl game record. All the bowl games. Record Ohio for State receiving record. yards. It's Ohio State record. He I sets think like I think it's like the fourth or fifth highest reception game ever, too. Yeah, it's um he then then on top of that, he sets the single season record for both receptions and yards, defeating David Boston and uh, was it Chris Carter, I believe? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's um but it was like we were all real convinced that Chris Olave was going to break that David Boston record, and oops! <laughs> I, I saw I saw somebody said that in this one game, JSN had or was near the uh, this for had the had more or almost as many yardage receptions in that one game than produced second receiver all season. <laughs> Oh, that's insane. Um, you know, and it was somewhat predictable. I mean, I, I picked I picked him as my Ohio State player of the game during our pregame. And it's just like, OK, you have this amazing trio of wide receivers. What happens if you take away two of them? Well, the, the guy left behind has an amazing, an absolute rock star all time. I was going to say all time Ohio State game, but like an all time all time game, period. And you have one of the true freshmen completely step up and and dominant and have a dominant game too. As, as much as we would want to see Olave and Wilson play another game, because I absolutely love, would love to see them um, wear that scarlet and gray uniform yeah. one more time. But for the future for Ohio State here, yeah, this this was this was probably the best thing to happen. You you got to see Fleming. Got to shine. Emeka, we've seen what he can do with the ball. And obviously, obviously, um, Marvin Harrison Jr., too, of what he did in the end zone as well. Like, man, this is the future. The future is going to continue to be bright at for Ohio State. It's it is just ridiculous how deep this <laughs> wide receiver group is. Stewart says, I'm glad Alave was there. Yeah, I thought it was great that he like participated in the practices and was essentially acting in a, a coaching-esque role for these players all week. I think that shows tremendous leadership on his part. 
So I saw I saw a, um, a retweet of uh, something that Tony Gerdeman over at uh, the Buckeye Scoop uh, reposted from the summertime. Is it, yeah, I think it was in the summertime when uh, when someone was asking Wilson about JSN and he it, it, about being the third about being the third wide receiver. Is is JSN um, going to be fine at that third receiver? And, and Wilson's like, Yeah, no. <laughs> or, you're you're in good hands. <laughs> you're in good hands. Yeah. And then it kind of hinted about like JSN maybe being better than Wilson or better than Olave too. He he was hinting at that, but nobody knew. But that re- wide receiver group knew. And Before later on in an interview with ESPN Game Day, both Wilson and Olave. A lot, I've seen a lot of people say that they said that he was the best one. It's not what they said. They said he was the most most athletic of the three of them. Not that he was the yeah. best of the three of them, but rather he was the most as, most athletic of the three of them. Um, and man, he's just he's athletic in a way that I don't think can be measured because he's so efficient. You know what I mean? Like he's so smooth. There's no wasted anything with him. He's he's amazing and. Ohio State gets him for another year, and that's that's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, like I said, we get a glimpse of the future uh, with Marvin Harrison Jr. having an amazing game, uh, Emeka and Fleming also having good games, uh, three and five catches respectively. Um, I, I think Ohio State is not going to be you know as much as Alave and Wilson are amazing, and they are. Ohio State's not going to be hurting at wide receiver next year. And by the way. Like, you're also getting, you know, CJ Stroud 2.0 next year. We're we're getting we're getting firmware upgrade CJ Stroud next year. Yeah. All right, Jared. Um, kind of beating around the bush here about grading. So yeah. I think I think it's safe to say quarterback wide receivers both A plus. Yeah. On our on our grading. Yeah. Uh, offensive offensive line. I would I wouldn't quite do an A plus, but an A. No. I'd, I'd give them I'd give them an A. Uh, I'd say an A minus. I would have liked the run blocking to be better. Yeah. I think there was only maybe once or twice in which I saw CJ Stroud get pressured. Um, I feel like CJ Stroud was throwing from a clean pocket most of the game. So, you know, credit due there. I think there was one like missed block on an inside blitz that they missed. And, you know, like I said, it wasn't a perfect game by the offensive line from a pass blocking standpoint, but I feel like he was clean for the most part, but, um, yeah, great point, Gangland. Uh, he was using his checkdowns. He ran. I, I feel like we already, like, with him basically just getting a month of coaching just away from the game, yeah, I, we, I you... think I saw a lot of growth in C.J. Stroud just in the past month. Just yeah, the, that's why... as Gangland said, using his checkdowns, the scramble. Mm-hmm. I think he was going through his reed tree a little bit more. I think he was less when like the play was breaking down, I think he was a little bit more willing to stand in the pocket and continue to look as opposed to just running outside. Um, yeah, I, his, I think his we che- already his, are seeing big growth from CJ Stroud. Yeah. His check down uh, players, Fleming, five catches, Henderson, four catches, Rucker, three catches. Yeah. Uh, even, even Mitch had a catch in there too. Uh, I, I'm still, go- I'm still going to call that as a fullback catch, but uh, I know sure. he's a tight end, but <laughs> ah, it's the same thing now it is. But yeah, a lot, lot of checkdowns and yeah, he making making all the right decisions there. So yeah, I'm I'm good to a minus with the offensive line, uh, tight ends. L- l- me just being uh, nice. Me just me. Well, no, I think a I think a is fine. I would love to have seen a touchdown from the tight ends, but that's just me being greedy. Uh, but <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll just stick with an a with uh, the tight ends. I thought they did. I think I that's slightly they generous, well. but that's okay. And then the and then the running backs, mm, tough 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 grading the running backs. I I gave him like a B. Yeah, I I, th- I think a B overall for the for the running backs for, Henderson, for the opportunities that they've been given. Henderson has been getting frustrated, and I think he's sometimes passing on yards that are there in an attempt to break it outside and break a long run. So. You know, we, we saw J.K. Dobbins do that same thing his entire sophomore season, which is why he was amazing as a freshman and amazing as a junior. Uh, that's a great point, Stuart. 
Um, Stewart says the running backs blocked well, and they did. They they blocked well for C.J. Stroud in pass protection. That that's a very good point. Yeah, um, I mean zero sex allowed in this game. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that that's a great point. So um. Yeah, that that does does push us a little bit further into that B, maybe even into a B plus because I was not taking that into consideration, and I should have. Um. <coughs> but the 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 problem I'm it's just like. I'm I'm hoping that they can identify that with Henderson now to basically look over the past few games and be like, you need to take the yards that are there. Bring bring J.K. Dobbins in this offseason. Have a sit down with J.K. Dobbins. It's like, dude, I was doing this my sophomore year. Don't waste your entire sophomore year trying to bust huge runs. Yeah. Don't do that. I did that. Don't do that. Because when he early, before people really started scheming against him, he was busting runs open all the time. Then people started scheming against him and, you know, they weren't stopping him, but they were, you know, the keeping him hemmed in somewhat, you know, yeah. and by hemmed in, I mean, getting five yards of carry as opposed to 10, but it's, it's something that I think he needs to get his head around that. He needs to take the yards that are there and the plays that will break open will break open, but he needs to go with the, plays that are there because he has been a little too aggressive in trying to make something happen as opposed to, like I said, just taking what's there. Yeah. All right. Anything else from this game here, Jared, anything else you want to take away? Uh, I mean, just that it was a lot of fun. Um, yes. It's, it's nice to be able to come back like that. It's that's that, that as much as you don't like watching Ohio state fall behind. It is, it is fun to watch them come back. Um, yes, Stuart, the defense needs improvement. Um, Ohio state's getting an actual real life defensive coordinator. Ohio state yes. had two defensive coordinators this year, neither of whom had defensive coordinating experience. Yep. Let's just call it what it is. Absolutely. Neither of those guys had actual defensive coordinator experience. Ohio state is now bringing in an experienced defensive coordinator and it's, it, and I think we're going to see a decent amount of the staff turned over. I mean, Matt Barnes is already gone. He took that job at Memphis. You'll see more. He was a uh, Barnes. Uh, Stewart says Barnes uh, co-coordinated at Maryland. Yes, he did. He wasn't calling the defense though. Sometimes you're sometimes you're the co-coordinator, which means you're the second co-coordinator. Uh, and that's what he was at Maryland. Like, with all due respect. And by the way, it was for one year. So, uh, will KC stay? Um, the only way I see Combs staying is if he's willing to accept a demotion and a pay cut. Yep. And I, 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 I don't see that happening. Could I be wrong? Yeah, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, we got, we got a few, we got a few ask Sloopcast questions from our fellow Sloopcats. Um, all right. So Stewart asks us, does this win versus Utah wipe out our loss to Oregon? No. That's not that's not how that's not how wins work. <laughs> I, wipe no, out. It, and it I get what he's saying. Because it lessens the blow it lessens the blow, but doesn't wipe it out. But but I but I do get what Stewart's saying because Utah demolished Oregon twice in the you know past few games. I get it. I get the question. Um and I do think it does show growth. But at the same time, like the transitive property just kind of doesn't work out like that, unfortunately. Um, yep. All right. Uh, it's because it, it's kind it's kind of like if you take Ohio State, Michigan, and Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. Michigan schemed and was a tough matchup for Ohio State because it was just it was a tough matchup for Ohio State for many reasons. Michigan against Georgia was a tough scheme, uh, a tough matchup for Michigan in many ways. But at the same time, Ohio State would have been a tough matchup for Georgia the way those the way they matched up. Ohio State was would have been in better position to defeat Georgia than Michigan was. Now, does that mean that Ohio State's better than Michigan? Well, I think you'd be kind of foolish to say yes at this point, based off of what we saw not that long ago. Yeah. All right. Z Spikes asks, can, can you explain how this offense 
hence to go three and out on their first drive. Does they not script the first series? Um, I, I also see that. I, I, I think we kind of talked about that with Stroud. I think he kind of reverted back to his like first half of the season ways where he wasn't quite, he wasn't quite in it, but yes, it's a great question. Yes. Gangland. It really is a great question. Um, I, I don't have a definitive answer other than to say Stroud wasn't wasn't really locked in yet. Um, yeah. Hopefully, second year CJ Stroud doesn't need a couple drives to lock in. Yep, agreed. All right, uh, cousin Jay, where does this rank on your Rose Bowl games all time? Where does this rank on all bowls that you can recall? Um, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. I mean, setting records is fun. Coming from behind is fun. All of that's fun. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. Uh, if Kirk Herbstreet's listening, earmuffs. Earmuffs, Herbstreet. The game doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Like, the Rose Bowl used to matter. It doesn't anymore. I'm sorry. I know, I know a lot of people don't like it when I say that. But fact of the matter is, nothing changed. Yeah. The it's, season it's just def- ends. It's... I mean, it, it's an inter, it's definitely one of the most entertaining bowl games to watch. But, but as far as ranking wise, I mean, you still got you still got the Sugar Bowl, and you still have the championship games, O yeah. two and fourteen as well. Th- those those go far 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 ahead of this game. But this For is sure. still fun. It was it was still a fun game to watch. But th- but that's uh, it. It was just fun. Yeah. Uh, um, Buckeye Esquire, um, was um, was that game, was tonight's game or the Rose Bowl game? What the T ten game would have been if it would play if it were played in a dome. Um, I don't know. Say, I, I know I'm there's a lot. No, I'm going to say no, just because I, I just think that that team up north they, they just came out just highly motivating that game and how it was just flat. It just but you like could say the flat. same thing about the Rose Bowl, right? Utah came out way more motivated than Ohio State. What you saw in that game was a motivation imbalance. This is Utah's mm-hmm. first ever Rose Bowl game. They were not in the power five up until just a few years ago. This is their this is I don't know I don't think it's their first big boy bowl game of all time, but it was their first Rose Bowl of all time. And they came out like it was their damn Super Bowl, and Ohio State was just pissed that they weren't in the playoffs. So you had a complete motivation imbalance. Um, the fact that Ohio State came back and won is is enormous and yeah. shows how s- skilled they are. But I, I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of Ohio State fans being like, well, the snow. Like, when it comes to the Ohio state mission game, well, the snow. And I get it. Snow is a talent neutralizer. Weather, bad weather, is a talent neutralizer. I get it. Mm-hmm. Did it play in to the final score, Ohio State, Michigan? Yes. Did it cause Ohio State to lose? No. I'm sorry. It's it makes a difference. It does, but Ohio State wasn't even close to being in that game. I'm sorry. It, it does. It yeah. doesn't make that big of a difference. Yeah. I'm sorry. It, Ohio State just lost. Yeah, if, if you it, if you need if you need that piece of denial. If you need it, you just call me an idiot. And, and and if that's a thing you need to hold on to so that you can get through the off season, you can just call me an idiot. It's okay. I've been called idiot. I've been called an <laughs> idiot before, but it's not true. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Gangland asks, is it time to keep Stover at linebacker? I think it's time for the coaching staff to make a decision and, and stick with it. And, you know, wherever Stover is the best, if, if he's a better tight end than a linebacker, so be it. If he's a better linebacker than a tight end, so be it. But, but you know, the coaching staff needs to make a decision on that. Yeah. And then last question, Michigan Bucknut. Did we witness the defense take a step in becoming more physical and tougher? No. No. Sorry, no. Uh, may, maybe strictly Eichenberg did. <laughs> maybe strictly Vincent did. Um, the corners I thought were good all year, so I'm not even going to put, you know, uh, again, Burke and Brown had good games, but they had good games all year. So that's mm-hmm. that doesn't 
I don't I don't count that necessarily as progress. Safeties were yeah, still no. bad. The defensive line as a whole still wasn't very good. I, um, I agree. I mean, look look how many times Ohio State defense got run over by the running yeah. backs and tight ends. Yeah. So to answer your earlier um, thoughts about first big boy uh, bowl game for Utah, they played in the Sugar Bowl against yeah. Alabama and beat them back in 09. And then they also played in the Fiesta right. back in 05 too. So this was like their third like New Year's yeah. bowl game. And that, that was Urban in 05, wasn't it? Uh, it was. Yes, it was. It was. Yes, it was. All right. Well, we we got a couple diff or a couple additional Ask Sloopcast questions put in our live chat here. Um, or excuse me, just one because I'm not reading Stewart's. Um, <laughs> oh, you know what? No, you just repeated the same one again, and I'm still not reading that one, Stewart. Sorry, I'm still not reading that one. <laughs> Uh, Stewart says this was Utah's crowning achievement as a bowl game. They truly once, what they truly wanted to be there. Um, yeah, exactly. This was they. It, I, this was their first Pac-12 championship year. This was yeah. It's it was a huge deal for them, and it was a sorry Kirk 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 Herb Street, my, my man. Cover cover years again. This was just a consolation prize for Ohio State. It is what it yeah, is. It was, yeah, I mean, yes. How many nice, Utah it, players? How many Utah players opted out of the bowl? You want to talk about a motivation imbalance? How many Utah players opted out of the bowl? Yeah, that that, that like, answers okay, your like, question. Like having 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 another trophy in the trophy room is nice. At getting that extra win to your your bowl your bowl games is nice too. But yeah, I, I agree with Jared. It's it was a. It was just another, not not a, not another glorified uh, spring game, but it's it it wasn't what Ohio State wanted, <laughs> right? For their and, and in all honesty, end. if it weren't for the absolute stat show that Stroud, if it weren't for the stat show that that Stroud and uh, and Jimbo put on, we wouldn't even remember this game in a couple of years. It's like when we beat, like I I vaguely remember beating USC in the Rose Bowl a few years back. But I like vaguely remember it. Like, you or, know what I mean? Notre Dame, or the Notre Dame game? Yeah, yeah. It's just sort of like it's just one of those bowl games that, like, oh yeah, we did beat USC in the Rose Bowl a couple years back. Now, now try and remember a single play from it. Yeah. Now, and Stewart's right too. The fact that that uh, Utah wanted it more, and how Ohio State fought back to win, says a lot about what we have left. <laughs> Stuart, Stuart really wants us to answer that question, Jared. Yeah, um, I, I'm not I'm not buying into his Harbaugh crap. All right. um, we only have a few minutes left here till tip off as we're recording this right before the basketball game, Jared. So we need to we need to end this so we can watch the game. All right. Yeah, let's do that. Um, fun game. Ultimately meaningless. It was really fun to see some of the young players play uh, and to see some of the young players who did play this year, I think, take some steps forward. Uh, CJ Stroud taking a step forward, Tommy Eichenberg taking a step forward. Uh, I think Ohio, if Ohio State can figure out their offensive line next year, if Ohio State can figure out their offensive line next year, then Ohio State will be in great position to make a run next year. But they have to figure out the offensive line. That's my big concern going into next year, the offensive line and the linebackers. So we'll see yep. how that goes. All right, uh, everyone, please go to thesloopcast.com. Find find our links there. Uh, come join our Discord server. It's a lot of fun. Come hang out with us. We we do live. We're about to live screen this basketball game, so you can join us. Uh, we live screen games unless ESPN asks, in which case we do not live screen. We do not do that. So come join our Discord server. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, and Kyle, do you have anything in in Kyle's corner? I got a boom. I got a boom in Amari Abor. That's the defensive end for the 2022 class. Has chosen Ohio State. Another kid out of Texas, Jared, coming to yep. Ohio State. Yeah, uh, an, an amazing defensive end. Um, and there should be. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Kyle, there was there was also a boom last night. We did not. Uh, we totally forgot. 
We, we've not really focused in on 2023 hard enough yet, if I'm being honest with you. That's the thing we're going to be doing uh, in the next few weeks. Um, yeah, but Ohio State picked up an amazing safety out of the state of Florida. Um, Cedric, Cedric Hicks, uh, or excuse Hawkins. me, Cedric Hawkins. Uh, yes. He's out of Florida, uh, out of Central Florida. Uh, really good defensive back. Anytime you can get, anytime you get those uh, Florida kids. Oh, man, Florida... He's not here to hear me say that <laughs> Florida <laughs> buck exclusively wants defensive backs out of, out of Florida. That that's his whole thing. Uh, but he's not here to hear me say it, but yeah, it's uh, another great pickup for the Ohio state secondary out of the state of Florida. Um, we're, we're going to, we're going to deep dive 2023 class uh, maybe this week, maybe next week uh, as, as we, uh, continue on with our our new format. We will be posting episodes more often. This is a this is a scarlet and gray episode. These will be longer, uh, but we're going to be doing a lot more short form episodes in the future. Look for like some 15, 20 minute sloopcast episodes. More frequent, shorter episodes. This this was never going to be a shorter episode. This is a scarlet and gray. These will always be full length. But... I mean, I mean, I mean, this is the last game, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, this is scarlet and grades. Into... A Scar- Scarlet and Great is a long form podcast. Um, the some of our other podcasts will be shorter form podcasts. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music. Tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by a band. I believe they're from Mansfield, Ohio. Something somewhere in that area. If not, uh, their name is Narrow Arrow. So, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Narrow Arrow. <laughs>